All right, this is going to be kind of a more brief lesson on track selectors um, and just some details about editing in three-point editing. Uh, there were some questions about um, how track selectors work and how patching track works, and I do want to talk about it there. Um, I have these other tracks here, track three, four, and five. Um, I have these additional tracks that are available. Um, if I didn't have those, and just so we, we can see here, if I took those and deleted those, for example... Um, I can hit the highlight them and delete, hit the delete key and it will ask me, do I want to delete the tracks? And yeah, I can delete the tracks. Cool. Um, so the trick being is, is that we have source video here. And in the source side, on the green side here, we have source video that consists of um, video one, audio one, and audio two. The audio tracks are separated out as separate audio tracks. And so these are the tracks. And this is this is what I consider what's feeding the track. So these tracks right here are what's feeding the timeline. And so this is feeding onto the timeline. And now the timeline over here has um, tracks V1 and V2 and A1 and A2. Now we can add more video tracks. We can go to timeline and add a new video track and say, hey, hey, another video track or hit command Y and add another video track. And we have multiple video tracks. Um, and then we can hit command U and add more audio tracks or go to timeline, new audio track and add more new mono audio tracks. So we can have additional audio tracks. Again, command U or control U if you're on a PC and you can add more tracks there. Now, the trick of this is, is that we always have the ability to drag down. And, you know, I have mixed feelings about dragging down. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. But say, for example, we want to put this clip on here and we want to drag this clip, make mark an endpoint here and we'll just take... I don't know, two, two or so seconds of this. And we want to take these two seconds. And we want to drag this down to the timeline. We can drag this down to anywhere. But notice what it's doing here. Notice that right now, if you see where it's hovering, I can put it on video track two or whatever I want to do. The audio is going to cut in the middle of Virginia's audio. And this is how it's going to work. And by default, it's going to overwrite. So dragging this down will default to overwriting it. But I can put it onto whatever track I want to. And I can actually make more tracks if I just keep dragging up. Um, so that's the thing I can do, but that's going to be a problem. And that's not as controlled. That's not as defined as I want to be. So dragging down always kind of runs into its own little kind of dilemmas here. Again, undo and do that. So I want to do a more formal way of editing, and I want to use my three-point editing. I want to define A, where I want to put this. So I decide that I want this clip with this in and out point. I want this right here. I want this at this in point right here. And then I'm going to define what tracks I want this to go on. So right now, by default, I typically want this to go on, say, um, here. Um, I want the audio tracks to go on to um, one to one and two to, two to go to two. And I want the video one to go to video one. And the way that I do that is, is I can just grab video one and point it. And it creates this little pointer called a track patching. And this track selector can say, hey, I want to put this on video one. And if I was going to add this to the end of the sequence, for example, if I was going to go here and then it's to the end of the sequence, mark an endpoint here, I can say, hey, I want to put V1 to V1 and I want to put A1 to A1 and A2 to A2. And when I splice this in or overwrite this onto the end with these tracks enabled, it's going to push this onto here. Now, if I didn't have the audio on, it wouldn't put the audio on. If the audio two wasn't there, it doesn't matter if this guy's trying to get into the door, this door is shut. And so when I put this on, it just puts the video on and says, don't do that. And so I can turn those on and turn those off like so. But I say I want to superimpose this on top of here. So I'm going to grab this V1 and I'm going to navigate this to V2. So it goes on top on track V2. And so it's up here onto V2. Now, if I mark an endpoint, say here, I'm saying I want it to go here v1 to go to v2 now hypothetically maybe i have some kind of organization where i say hey b-roll goes in video two um you know something else titles or graphic imports um go on v3 well i can patch it up to v3 it takes the liberty of automatically turning off the track that i patch away from so you'll notice here that if i drag to v1 it's going to turn off v2 B3. Um, we'll talk about that in a second, but this idea of just clicking and dragging the arrows to point to what you want it, what track you want it to go to is another way of doing it. On other systems, sometimes you just drag up and it pulls the track selector up. Um, you can also right click on this or you can actually, sorry, you can uh, alt click um, or just click and hold down, I think. Yeah, click and hold down. You can navigate to which track you want to go to. So if you click and hold, it'll give you, hey, which track do you want to go to? Oh, I want to go to V3. And I want to navigate to V3. So now V1, this video source, which only contains one track of video, is going to go on the tracks of V3. And so when I add this on, I can say, hey, I want this sound. I want Virginia talking, but later on, I want the sound underneath this. So I'm going to patch A1 to A3. So the A1 is going to be here. And A2 to A4. And so now, sorry, patch A2 to A4. And now A1 and A2 are going to go to A4. Now when I use the keys, as opposed to, as opposed to, clicking and dragging, which is questionable, 
I'm going to use my keys. So I'm going to use my splice and my overwrite, my V and my B keys and say, oh yeah, I want this clip from here to here to go here. And I want this to go like this and it's going to go like that. And that's where I want these tracks to go. So having a designation of where you want your tracks to be is sometimes important. And so having that kind of control of saying, no, I want this to be on V2 and I'm not using A2 here. So maybe I can put A1 and A2 and then A2 and A3 and have it like that. And that's the way I want the, the the workflow to go. So these tracks will be isolated as, you know, natural sound tracks. So that while Virginia's talking here, we have the natural sound of people doing yoga with goats. These student interns. So she thought and I can adjust levels there accordingly when we talk about audio, but that'd be the trick. And so I can have certain tracks be designated for certain things. So one of the things you can do if you have multiple tracks and it gets confusing and you want some kind of organized system is you can actually go onto the timeline. You can go to the track selectors themselves and you can actually, on the timeline side, right click and say, rename tracks. And you could call, say, V1, something like content or something. And that would be V1 content. And then V2, rename tracks. And you could call this, say, um, I don't know, b-roll or something and then you have a b-roll track there that's isolated as a named track there and titles will go on v3 and you can have all this kind of system of titles and some people will do that some people will go through the trouble of having these tracks named so they know where they're going to so all this stuff goes to here v1 goes to there v2 goes to there v3 and you're just clicking the the v1 and dragging it to the track Kind of like, this is like old school patching. If you ever worked in a studio and you worked with a patch bay before or an audio studio and you worked with patch bays, you want to navigate where the signal is going to a different location. Or if you ever worked with, you know, plumbing before, you could talk about it like in terms of piping, you're navigating, hey, this this is feeding this. And so this is feeding this and this is feeding this like so. Now, there are a couple of controls that we have here in the patching controls. So let's go to the um, the settings, command shift equal, and we'll go to settings. And I want to look at the user timeline settings. And so here in the user timeline settings, um, you will see some of the controls. And under the edit tab here under the user settings, you will see here, there's um, a couple things you have. You have auto patching and auto monitoring. Let me talk about auto patching first. That can be on or be off. Um, and so auto patching works this way. Um, if I have V2 on, so I have V2, I have V2 on, but I don't have V, but I, and I have V1 on right now. We're going to close this for a second. Um, if I turn V1 off, this guy is desperately trying to go to a track that's enabled. So this track is enabled, this track is enabled, and it says, hey, I'm fine here. But the second I turn this track off and say, hey, not enabled, it auto patches for me. I don't even have to do anything. It just goes, oh, let me go to two. Oh, two's on, let me go to three. And then I turn two off and it jumps to three. And I go back to one, I turn three off and it jumps to one. And so it's constantly trying to jump, trying to find a place where it can get in the door. It's kind of like, this is like the hot club on a Saturday night and it's trying to get to that club. And you say, oh no, I want to go to this club. Okay, let's get in this door. If this door's locked, let's get in this door. Oh, this door is locked. Okay, let's get in this door. And so whichever door is closed, it's going to go to the open door. And this happens with audio all the time is where I go like this and it patches over and I say, okay, let's turn this one off. And it just auto, I don't have to drag to make that happen. It just auto patches for me and does that auto patching instantaneously, perfectly there like so. Lastly, I want to control, I want to close the control panel. And what I do want to talk about these guys right here. And these guys right here are the monitors. And the monitors are kind of weird inside of Avid. I'll admit, they're kind of weird. Um, and so here you have on the audio, this is simple. You have a solo and a mute button. So if we have this track here and we have something soloed, um, I can solo this track. So if I had, say, this audio here, I had this clip in here, and I said, overwrite this clip down here, and I'm going to put this onto the B-roll, and so it's going to look like this. I could say, cool, I want to have this. Student Later on, I'm going to fix the audio. For right now, I don't want to fix the audio, so I'm going to mute these tracks, and I just don't want to. I don't want to hear the background natural sound here. So I can mute the whole track, and I have that ability. Or I could solo the whole track. I could say rather than just mute everything, I can just solo one thing. I say, oh, I just I just want to hear the Virginia track. I just want to hear the main content track, which is going to inadvertently mute everything else. So when you solo. Student interns. So she thought you mute everything else. And so that's the trick there. So you have a solo and mute buttons there like so. Notice for the source clips, you also have solo and mute buttons. So if you're watching this in the source monitor here, the green side, the green side, you say, hey, I have two different audios here. Say, for example, like we did this before where we had, say, um, uh, my here. And we said, oh, I know that one of these is the good audio for my. I don't remember which one. So let's take a listen and let's see. So, a lot of different vocations. so she's got a lavalier in her. 
but you're hearing a lot of background noise. And that's because one of the channels, let's solo this one. This sounds noisy and garbagey. Let's solo this one. Oh, much cleaner. This is the lavalier that's clipped on her here. So this is a much cleaner channel with a much better appreciation. Now, that is the monitoring with audio. With video, you have these little TVs right here. And these little TVs are these little icons right here. We can turn the TV off on V1 and say, hey, now we can't see it, but we can hear it. Try to put them on our payroll or whatever. So these little TVs will turn off and turn on just to, just to let us hear it and see it. Sometimes you want to listen to something, but you don't want to see you know, the, the image because it's just distracting. You just want to listen to it. Yeah, you can turn that off. You can do that here as well. You can click this and turn this one off. And now the timeline... Yoga teacher. You're just focusing on listening to the timeline, not seeing it, just focusing on listening to it. Now, like in other rating systems, there is an eyepiece um, for each track. And so each track has its own eyepiece. Uh, I've decided kind of a while ago that it was kind of senseless. I guess, I don't know. They just decided that it was kind of weird to have a, an eyepiece for everyone. Because um, what you're doing is, is you either, if you're looking at V4, if you're looking at the monitor for V4, um, the idea being is that you have something on V4, and we could take this, we can move this up to V4. For example, just hypothetically, we could take this up and move this up to V4, up like this. And now when we play this, it's going to play V4, V3, V2, and V1, which means if there's something on V4, it's going to show me V4. If there's something on V3, it's going to show me what's on V3. So if there's nothing on V4, it's only going to show me V3. If there's nothing on V2, it's only it's going to show me just V2. And if there's only something on V1, so if these tracks are blank, these are just invisible, it only shows me this track. So the way that this works is it shows you this track and then shows you... V so this is just showing me V1, nothing on V2. This is showing me V2 and V1. If there's something on V2, it's over top. And something on V1, it's underneath. If there's something on V3, it's going to show me V3, V2, V1. And then here, if it's some, something on V4, it's going to show me V4, V3, V2, V1, and they're like so. And if I added more tracks, Command Y, Command Y, Command Y, Command Y, now it's show me eight down. So if there's something on eight, cool, eight down. Something on seven, shows me seven down. Um, and so you can set this to whatever you want, kind of working your way down. If there's blank tracks below, it just keeps looking from the top down and looking that way like that. Let me get rid of these extra tracks because I don't really need them, but I just want to show you that as an idea, that kind of overlay mentality. Um, and so you have V1, V2, V3, V4, etc. And you can look down. Now there is a weird thing. We're gonna go back to the settings here. I want to talk about this really quickly. Command shift equal. Um, if you go back to the timeline settings, in the timeline settings, in the edit section here of the timeline settings, you will see a thing that says auto monitoring. Okay, I don't like auto monitoring. I'm not a big fan of auto monitoring. I don't I don't prefer it. Um, I'm not interested in it. I'll show you what it does and I'll show you maybe you like it. Go for it. If you like it, cool. Awesome. You're a different person than me. You're allowed to be. Um, if I drag V1 to V3, if I patch V1 to V3, and see, I just held down for a little too long and it, and it brought up that. Um, but if I grab V1, I drag it to V3, and I grab that arrow and drag it to V3, it's going to put the monitor on V3. And then if I go to V1, it's going to put the monitor on V1. I put the monitor on V2, it's going to show me V2. Go on V3, go to V4. And you see this monitor keeps moving with it. It just moves it with it just to keep this there. I... I Sometimes I don't want that. I just want it to stay on V4. Hey, I have stuff in V4. I have stuff in V3. I have stuff in V2. I have stuff in V1. I decide that I want everything to be visible from V4 down. And so command shift equal, go to the timeline settings. Again, timeline settings, auto monitoring. I'm going to turn that off and say, hey, I don't, I don't want this to jump with it. So now when I patch to V1, it patched to V2, and this is still on 4. If I patch to V3, this is still on 4. Patch to V4, this is still on 4. I patch back to V2, it's still on 4. It doesn't move constantly to try to update and move with that. Yeah, that's sometimes better for me. That's sometimes easier for me. I hope that makes sense. I hope that's easy to understand. So it's just this idea that we're navigating here to here. And again, if I'm dragging down, I can drag to whatever track I want to, but I'm not a big fan of dragging down because it's kind of, it's kind of wild and crazy. And so I prefer to use my three-point editing. I prefer to use this idea that I'm going to mark an endpoint. You know, and even if I mark an endpoint here and then say, I want this to go right here from here to here. Hey, which track is it going to go to now? Well, it's going to go on top of Virginia, which maybe I want if I want to overwrite that way, but maybe I want to put it on V3. And now the audio, I want to go to here to here and I want the audio to go on V2 and V3 and I can just drag. So I'm navigating where this is feeding, kind of lining this, this pipe up to this pipe and then going on like there. That's how this works. That's how this makes sense.
Really quickly, I would be remiss if I didn't mention a quick trick. Um, if you wanted to see one track, so right now here, hold on, we'll do this again. We'll put this here um, and we'll just have this from here to here and I'll just overwrite this down on top of there. So now we have this track up here. Um, if I wanted to see just this track and nothing else, I can hold down the command key and that will turn this monitor to green. And that monitor green means solo this track. So I can solo the track. I can say command click and solo a singular track and say boom and say, hey, I only want to see this track. So now it's only showing this track on the track. If I only want to see, you know, if this was up like this or up in V4, I can put this up in V4 and I can I can solo just this track. So if I have a, if I have multiple layers, if I'm doing effects and I have a whole bunch of layers on top of each other, like 16 layers on top of each other, and there's all this complex effects mess. Yeah, sometimes I just want to solo one track to see, oh, what is this one thing doing? Not what everything else is doing. That is command click or control click on a PC to command click that track and show it there. Um, really quick, just as a quick little addition, you remember that inside here in the bin window, you can hit command L to make the segments bigger or make the clips bigger. And then um, command K to make them smaller. So K for smaller. Command L and Command K. Well, guess what? On the timeline, you can also hit Command L to make the tracks bigger and Command K to make the tracks smaller. So if you're on the timeline, if you click the timeline, Command L and Command K will make the tracks bigger. And then you're here, your Command K and Command L will do that. And also, if you didn't know, in the window, if you clicked on the, the window, you can hit Command L and make the image bigger and you can zoom into the image kind of thing. And again, Command K to make smaller. It'll say right here, times one, times two, times four. And so you can zoom in there. That's 75%. Same thing here. So Command K and Command L will work in various different places. Sometimes people run to that app by accident. They're here and they hit Command L. Instead of just hitting L to play this, you know, L would play this. Command L would zoom in. So just be careful when you do that. So those are some things about the track selectors. Track selectors are vitally important. They are kind of the lifeblood of the Avid editing system. And I do want you to understand how they work and how, they, how they're utilized and some of those good things like there. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to stop there, and uh, I hope this will be a good addendum to um, lesson three, I think. Lesson three, which was the Avid Media Composer editing lesson, which is really the, you know, the ground floor of really getting into the editing system and making timelines and sequences. All right. Talk to you later.